All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video lesson for Chapter 1, Lesson 1 in your McGraw-Hill Algebra 2 textbook. Now, this video here is going to cover more than just what is in Section 1. We'll actually be reviewing a number of topics that will be on the SAT, as that is our new accountability test that you will be taking at the end of your junior year. So example one in your notes, which we've already covered in class, is covering how to evaluate algebraic expressions. Now the key here is that this is going to be based on HEMDAS, which is an idea that we should have been working with for a number of years now. Remember that that means parentheses, followed by exponents, followed by multiplying and dividing, followed by addition and subtraction. That is the order that we are supposed to do things in, in order to solve, to evaluate, to simplify expressions. Remember that we always work from the inside of the expression to the outside. So if there are multiple sets of parentheses, you start with the innermost set, work your way out, and we always work from left to right. Okay. So on these first two examples, what we're going to do to evaluate these is we are going to go in and replace x with 12. Okay, we're going to go in and we're going to replace every single x with the number 12. And we are going to replace every single y with the number 1. So that would give us 12 plus 3 minus 1 quantity squared. Then we need to use PEMDAS to simplify. So we would start with the parentheses. 3 minus 1 is 2 squared, giving us 12 plus 2 squared. Then we would carry out the exponents, 12 plus 4. There is no multiplication or division, so now we add left to right. 12 plus 4 is 16. We're going to do the same thing on the second example, so please pause the video and try it on your own. Then resume the video to see how you did. So we will be replacing every x with 2, every y with negative 1, and every z with 5. So when we do that, we will have the expression 2 to the third power minus 8 times negative 1 times 5 over negative 1 to the second power plus 3 times 5. Now keep in mind that these parentheses here are not even really parentheses. What they're showing is multiplication. Now where there are parentheses that we don't see is that the fraction bar itself, what that fraction bar means is that we have parentheses around the numerator and denominator that are not shown. So we do have to simplify the numerator and the denominator separately before carrying out the division shown by that division bar. So in the numerator, our first step would be to deal with the exponent. 2 to the third power would be 8. We would still have minus 8 times negative 1 times 5. On the bottom, we'd do negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 times 5. Now, we would carry out multiplication and division, again, from left to right. So that would be 8 minus... I'm sorry, plus, because it's negative 8 times negative 1 is 8 times 5 is 40 over 1 plus 3 times 5 is 15. Now we carry out addition from left to right, which gives us 48 divided by 16. And then finally we divide 48 divided by 16 is 3. Order of operations and evaluating algebraic expressions is a skill that you should be practicing every year starting in about fifth or sixth grade. So really these should be full-time review and we shouldn't need to spend any additional time on this skill. Okay, next up here we have uh, simplifying algebraic expressions. In both cases here we we're talking about adding like terms. Okay, when we see these polynomials we should be thinking add like terms. Terms. Now, before we can actually add like terms, though, we have to deal with the parentheses themselves. We can't have these parentheses in here before we add like terms. So what we do is we have to consider what number is in front of the parentheses. So on example A here, we have a positive 1 in front of the first set of parentheses and a negative 1 in front of the second set of parentheses. We are going to distribute 
those values through the parentheses. So our expression would become x squared plus x minus 7 minus 4x minus 3. Then we are going to add like terms. Now our like terms here, and I'll use a highlighter to show you where they are, we've got two terms that contain an x, so those should be getting combined. And we have two terms that are just numbers. Those should be getting combined. Notice I did not highlight the x squared. That is because the first term of our answer is just x squared. Our second term would be x minus 4x, which is 1x minus 4x, or negative 3x. And then finally, negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. Those three terms are not like terms, so that cannot be simplified any further, which means the correct answer to our multiple choice question is D. Notice we could have gotten there quicker if we had noticed that A and C, there is no x cubed term in the answer, so those could have been eliminated, which means the second we knew minus 3x was part of the answer, we could have eliminated B, and we would have known the correct answer. So that's a little bit of a test-taking skill. Same thing on the next one here. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then resume the video to see how you did. So again, we need to get rid of the parentheses first. We put the negative 1 in front, and we distribute it to all three terms inside, which would give us 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 minus x squared minus 2x plus 1, because this negative is going to change the signs on all three of these terms. Now we're going to add like terms. We have a couple of x squared terms, so those will get added together. We have a couple of x terms. Those will get added together. And we have a couple of numbers. Those will get added together. So 3x squared minus x squared is 2x squared. That eliminates C and D as possibilities. 4x minus 2x is 2x. That eliminates 6x, which means we know the answer. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Our answer is A. Okay, that is where uh, we're going to switch gears. Okay, we've got a little bit to talk about here in terms of the SAT itself. I've shown you a little bit of test-taking strategy there. Let's talk about the SAT. First of all, the SAT is different from the I-STEP in that the SAT reference sheet is far more limited. What you see on your screen right now and what is in your notes is the SAT reference sheet. There is not one more item available to you on the actual reference sheet. All it shows you are area and circumference of a circle, area of a rectangle and a triangle, but remember that rectangle would include parallelogram, it would include... Um, it would include square, it would include, you know, as long as your length and width are perpendicular, that equation covers most quadrilaterals. Uh, then we've got uh, the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which everybody should know that that only applies to right triangles, followed by this box in the upper right here, special right triangles, which is really a shortcut and is not really something that you necessarily need, uh, but it might be helpful on a couple problems. And then we've got the volume equations for your five basic three-dimensional solids. You've got your rectangular prism. Volume is length times width times height. You have your cylinder. Volume is pi times the radius of the base squared times the height. Sphere. Volume is four-thirds pi times the radius cubed. A right cone. One-third pi r squared h. And a rectangular pyramid. Volume is one-third length times width times height. Then we have a couple conversion factors down below that there are 360 degrees in a circle, that there are two pi radians in a circle, and that the sum of the measures of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So not a ton of helpful information, but there, there it is. That's what you've got. That's what you're always going to have. will be available to you on every test and quiz you take in my class. Next up, quick description so of the calculators that you've got. First of all, on the left, you'll see the basic pad layout of your school-issued yellow calculator, the TI-30XS MultiView. Uh, it does look a little bit different because it doesn't have the yellow outline, but that is the button layout. Notice that we've pointed out a few important keys there. You've got the Pi key. You should be using that unless the directions tell you to use 3.14. 
And right below the pi key is the caret or exponent key. That allows you to put in exponents other than 2. Now, on the bottom right, circled in red, you'll see this button down here by enter. That button is very important. That will convert your answer between math print and standard notation. What that means is it will change your answer from decimal to uh, fraction, uh, from a square root to a decimal. Okay, it will do things like that for you. Now, on delta math, you've also got a calculator built in. There's those same keys pointed out, the A to the B button. It allows you to put in exponents other than 2. And your pi key is there on the keypad. There is no convert button on delta math because on delta math, it tells you how to round. So you should be giving your answers, if necessary, as decimals rounded to the appropriate number of symbols. Note that it says right here on your paper, do not use your phone as a calculator even at home. Phone calculators are usually reverse entry scientific calculators, which makes them extremely difficult to use because that's very different from the one we're using in class. Okay, back to live action. So now we're going to use this reference sheet to talk about some word problems. So here in example three, these are called, uh, we're trying to use those geometric formulas that were given to us. Uh, we've got four problems here in the example three section. So let's go through them. First up, how many cubic inches of popcorn fit in this container? We need to recognize that that container is a rectangular prism. and grab the correct equation from the sheet. So we go to the reference sheet, we locate the equation for a, rec a uh, rectangular prism, which is volume is length times width times height, and we write that down. Length times width times height. Now in geometry, you should have learned that in a rectangular prism, it does not matter which dimension you consider to be the length, which you consider to be the width, and which you consider to be the height. We have three numbers here. They are interchangeable. So the volume of this box, the number of cubic inches, right there is where we should know that this is a volume problem because volume is units cubed, uh, is 8 inches times 4 inches times 11 inches. So we would go to our school-issued calculator and we would carry out 8 times 4 times 11 and we would find out that the volume of this rectangular prism is 352 cubic inches. Do not forget your units. Now, the challenge on the SAT is to figure out, okay, well, I know what shape I'm dealing with, but what answer are they asking me for? Are they ask me for area, they ask me for perimeter, they ask me for volume or surface area. You have to read the problems very, very closely. So on example B, it says, how many inches does the hamster run every time the wheel makes a complete turn? Now, the hamster is running around the outside of the circle. So what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the circumference. Okay, we're trying to find the circumference. Now, it does not state in there anywhere that we're supposed to use a value for pi. So we are going to use the pi button, and we're going to use the circumference equation, which is over here underneath the circle, circumference equals 2 times pi times r. 2 times pi times r. Now, they tell us in the problem that the radius of the circle is 3 inches. So the circumference is 2 times pi times 3 inches. So the circumference, the entire circumference, is 6 pi inches. That is the exact answer. Now, on your school-issued calculator, if you put in 6 and then hit the pi key, it prints 6 pi. Now, we probably want this to be as a, a decimal, so we are going to round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so we have 3 point, or I'm sorry, 18.84, and that third digit is a 9. That third digit is more than 5, so that tells us we round the 4 up, meaning our approximate answer would be 18.85 inches. Okay. Now, if this is a multiple choice question, if the answers all contain pi, we know that they want the exact answer. And if they don't contain pi, we should round to the number of decimal places as all of the answers. They will all be rounded to the same number of places, so we should round our answer the same way they do. Okay, example C. What is the area of a circle with a diameter of 9 inches? Now, diameter 
is something that's not on the reference sheet. You are supposed to know that the radius is half of the diameter, which means if the diameter is 9 inches, then the radius is 9 halves inches. Now we follow that up with our area equation for a circle. Area is pi r squared. And we come up with our equation there. Area equals pi times the radius squared which means the area of this circle is pi times 9 halves squared. When we feed that to our calculator, it will square 9 and square 2 and then attach the pi symbol. So your calculator is going to print 81 pi over 4 square inches. This is the exact answer. Okay, this is the exact answer. Okay, but let's get the decimal approximation for that. So when we have that typed into our calculator, and we hit the convert button, we will see the decimal 63.61 and that next digit is a 7. Again, that's more than 5, which tells us to round the 1 up. So our approximate area would be 63.62 square inches. Okay. A standard size bass drum is a cylinder with a diameter of 22 inches. So there again, we don't really need diameter. We need the radius, which would be half of 22, or 11 inches, and a height of 18 inches. So we are dealing with a cylinder. Quick sketch is never a terrible idea. With a radius of 11 inches and a height of 18 inches. It wants the volume of that cylinder. So we go to our reference sheet, we locate the volume equation for a cylinder, which is pi r squared h. It does not say to put anything in for pi. In fact, it says it wants the answer in terms of pi. So when we plug in, we are going to leave pi in our answer, which means it's looking for an exact answer. So we're going to do, in our calculator, the pi button times 11 squared times 18, which is a volume of 2,178 pi. It is volume, which means inches cubed. Volume is always units cubed. So there we have some examples of how to use the SAT reference sheet to evaluate geometric formulas. Moving on, we're going to do a little bit of review here with percents and ratios, as well as unit conversions. Um, example four is always a little bit challenging for students because percent increase and percent decrease are things that we have not really done since early in middle school. So these are a good thing to review because they do appear on the SAT, and we want to make sure that we're comfortable with them. So on example A, it says the number of books in a library increased 30% from 2002 to 2014. Okay, that's going to be important that the number of books increases between these two years. In 2002, which is our original, there were X books. That represents 100%. Okay, which expression represents the number of books in the library in 2014? Well, that would be our new number which would be an increase of 30%. So we're going to take that 100%, we're going to add 30%, which would mean we're looking at 130% of X. Well, this is a percent. These are written in decimal format. So we need to realize that a percent sign means we're supposed to move the decimal two places to the right, which means we're looking for 1.3X, or C. On letter B, a recipe requires F cups of flour. So our original, the actual recipe, says F cups of flour, which represents 100%. Okay? Andy, hey, that's my name, accidentally used 25% less flour than the recipe required. So I screwed up and I used 25% less than I'm supposed to. Okay, how much flour did Andy use in terms of F? Well, if I used 25% less than I was supposed to, then I used 75% 
of the amount I was supposed to use, 75% of F. Again, look here. These are decimals. So when I take this percent and turn it into a decimal, that is 0.75. Of means to multiply. So, for, so I'm looking for 0.75F or D. Okay. Got two more here. These are actually ratio problems. And uh, these two represent a single day of your geometry course from last year. Um, these are separator questions on the SAT. There's not a ton of them. But if we can get this, then that would be good points to get. So says two beach balls are each in the shape of a sphere. The larger beach ball has a diameter of 3x. And the smaller has a diameter of x. Then it says, what is the ratio of the area of large to small? So the ratio of the diameters would be large to small, 3x over x. Well, we could cancel the x to get a ratio of 3 over 1. But this is the length ratio, not the area ratio. That's the scale factor. So the area, well, what we have to do is we have to take the length and we have to square it because area is always in units squared. So our area ratio would be 3 over 1 squared, which is 9 over 1. Remember that this ratio can be written as 9 to 1, or you can use the words 9 to 1. The answer is C. Now notice letter D is the exact same problem, except instead of area, it says what is the ratio of the volume. Okay? We already know the ratio of the length from the previous problem is 3 to 1. But volume is units cubed. So that would be 3 over 1 cubed or 27 to 1 is the ratio of the volumes, large to small. Okay. That brings us to the next example. That was terrible. I'm going to clean that up. Okay, that brings us to the next and roughly final set of examples here. Okay, that, those are E and F. E and F are unit conversions using dimensional analysis. Okay, if you are in chemistry or physics or you plan to take chemistry or physics, this is a very important skill to have. Okay? You'll notice that in the directions they tell you how many yards are in a foot, and that's because it's not on the reference sheet. SAT does that a lot. If you need a formula and they feel it's fair for you to be given the formula, they don't put it on the reference sheet like the I-STEP did. They provide it to you in the specific problem where you need it. Now notice that. They gave you the distance conversion on letter E, but on letter F, they did not give you the time conversion. The SAT expects you to know your time conversions. They expect you to know that there are 24 hours in a day, that there are 60 minutes in an hour, that there are 60 seconds in a minute. They expect you to know these things. So what we do is we carry out what is called dimensional analysis. We take our measurement, 48 feet, and we put it over 1. Now, we are going to use a fraction to change from feet to inches. The idea will be to take our conversion factor, which is given in the problem, one well, yard equals three feet, okay, and they want us to convert from feet into, and I wrote inches, but I meant yards, okay? Also, while I'm on the subject, all four answers have a typo here. They should all say yards. Let's fix that typo in our notes before we go any further. Okay? We're being asked how many yards is 48 feet? Well, we take our unit conversion, one yard equals three feet. We want feet to cancel from top to bottom. So we put the three feet on the bottom and the one yard on the top. Because the numerator and denominator are equivalent values, that entire fraction has a value of one. 
which means that when I multiply these, I'm multiplying by 1, which does not change the value. What it does do is feet cancels, and our measurement will now be in yards. So our answer here would be 48 divided by 3, because we multiply straight across, and then we would divide. 48 divided by 3 is 16 yards. The answer is B. Letter F is a more complicated version of the same idea. Instead of giving you a length, it gives you a rate. 320 million feet per second. So we write that as a fraction, 320 million feet over one second. Now we want that to be converted into yards per minute. So we're going to start by converting feet into yards. Same way we did before, we want feet to cancel. So we put three feet on the bottom, which would cause feet to cancel. One yard on the top, making this fraction equivalent to one and keeping the value from changing. This measurement is now, now that feet is canceled, in yards per second. But we don't want yards per second, we want yards per minute. So we need to do the same sort of thing to convert seconds into minutes. There are 60 seconds in one minute. Again, that is not given anywhere. It's not on the reference sheet. They expect you to know that. We put seconds on top so that it will cancel. And this measurement is now in yards per minute, which is what we want. So we multiply straight across. We end up doing 320 million times 60. Notice I didn't write million. It's going to be part of our answer. Okay. And on the bottom, 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. And that is in yards per minute. So we're going to use our calculator to evaluate 320 times 60 divided by 3, which is 6,400, and then we have that million on there, yards per minute. C. Okay, notice you could have completely ignored the word million in that problem and still gotten to the correct answer. All right, finally, we have a combination on G of a two-way table and a unit conversion. The problem reads, the table gives a typical adult weight ranges and lifespans for African and Asian elephants in the wild. Based on the table, what is the typical minimum weight of an adult African elephant in pounds? So we need to locate this number, the minimum weight, typical minimum weight of an adult African elephant. So we go to minimum and African. That is 2.50 tons. Put it over 1. Then we use our conversion factor. 1 ton is 2,000 pounds. Just like we did in the previous example. By putting ton on the bottom, we cause ton to cancel, meaning our answer is 2.50 times 2,000, or 5,000 pounds. And I didn't use the abbreviation for pounds, but this is the abbreviation for pounds. Okay? So these are examples of SAT questions. This is what we're going to have to be able to deal with in the spring with all these various skills from middle school and high school. That does it for our video here today. Remember, if you found this helpful, you can like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for your time and attention.